Here we go again. <laughs> what is up, everybody? My name is Mike Brown, aka Review King MB, and well, it's time to be negative again because <laughs> I'm here to talk about the 10 movies that I thought absolutely sucked from 2018. My worst of list. Let's jump right into it. Number 10 Fantastic Beasts. The Crimes of Grindelwald. Look, I'm not saying this is the worst movie in the world. Obviously, it's just at number 10. But I am so sick of certain movies, certain franchises, who, if you don't really have a great story to tell, if you don't really have a, a great purpose for why we're continuing in the franchise, then don't do it. Stop doing it purely for greed and money they are milking the harry potter franchise for everything that it's worth jk rowling i don't i don't know what's going on with the series now these prequels are not working so far eddie redmayne as a as a main character just does not work he's not interesting he's too awkward and weird i don't want to follow him i'd much rather follow dan vogler but johnny depp isn't really bringing much to this villain character and i don't hate johnny depp i'm not turning on him because of his personal life i just wanted more with his casting sure there's some big action set pieces but i was so confused at so many different times with the plot three or four times i'm like what's going on here number nine mortal engines i just saw this very recently so it's fresh in my head you have horribly written characters boring boring story i haven't been bored in a, in a big budgeted movie until well when you see what my number one movie is but this this deserved to bomb i saw that it was a huge bomb at the box office and thank god right the last thing we need is a movie that costs over a hundred million dollars to make that money. We've been down that road with the Transformers movies, and thankfully, people are starting to realize that when you see a movie that does not look interesting, this trailer did not look interesting. Hugo Weaving, as a uh, grave an actor as he is, did not save this as the villain. Uninspired in every way, shape, or form. Number eight, tag. Here is a comedy movie. I love comedies. I love to laugh. I really do. And you have this cast of Jeremy Renner, Ed Helms, who has a, a motivation of winning this tag game. Wow. So compelling. I really felt bad for him at the end. Let me tell you. Jake Johnson, who, thank God, he had that Spider-Man movie come out. Isla Fisher, who's the only woman who I guess is involved in the game. John Hamm, I can't believe they got him to do this. And Hannibal Burris, who I don't buy as being friends with these people at all. This movie never once made me laugh. And your job as a comedy is to make me laugh or at least chuckle. And I did not get that at all. If this wasn't based on the true story, I would not have believed anything that I saw in the film number seven the darkest minds was one of those plots where you see young kids in a post-apocalyptic world where the world is crap so we have to rely on kids to be our saviors they have mutant powers which is funny because this was made by 20th century fox who you already own the x-men just release the new mutants for god's sakes what are we wasting our time with this crap our main character, Amanda Steinberg, who, thank God she had that movie, The Hate You Give. I didn't see it, but from what I heard, it's good. So at least she had that to make people wipe the stench off of, off of whatever the hell this movie was. And the stupid love triangle that they had. Oh, man, just being reminded of this movie and the horrible, horribleness of it. And oh, yeah, Mandy Moore was in it. <laughs> For whatever reason. Number six. I feel pretty. Well you know what Amy Schumer. I don't feel pretty after watching this movie. I feel gross. I feel disgusted. I feel like the blob. Because honestly. 
you make this movie, you make all of these movies, really all of your films other than train wreck has been a train wreck. Your career is going off of a cliff. It's, it's just bad decisions after bad decisions with these horrible comedies. They tried to paint this movie. I, I saw the interviews, the directors, and even Amy Schumer talk about this movie as if it had some some moral thing to say and some life lessons about feeling pretty about yourself. But yet we spend the majority of the movie having characters make fun of Amy Schumer for being a grotesque, ugly pig which I honestly don't think she's that unattractive, but the movie makes you think she's a gremlin. And her with this false self-confidence, what are you teaching people? That you have to not really see yourself to have confidence? Wow! Great role model. And oh yeah, Michelle Williams, who, wow, what a waste. Between this and Venom, she's had a horrible year. With movies, and I've never really said that before about Michelle Williams. I feel bad saying it. Number five, Acrimony. Tyler Perry, good God almighty, he writes and directs these movies that I swear, the ones that I've seen have been so atrocious. And luckily, he makes them for cheap, so they almost always make money. But Taraji P. Henson, she plays this character who falls in love with Lyric Bent, good actor it's just waste in this movie and at first they present it as if he is going to be this cheater and treat her bad uh, because he made a mistake but he actually goes out of his way to pay her back and then some with all of the money that she would give him when they were together and he was putting it towards this business that he was trying to make so she thinks now, oh, he's going to want to be back with me again, which, no, he's moved on. He feels bad for what he did to you, so he came back and gave you money. But she freaks out. Taraji P. Henson plays a character that's written so unlikable and so horrible. She goes batshit insane. She attempts to kill him and his new girlfriend so many times. The ending of this movie, On the Boat, is some of the craziest stuff I've ever seen in a movie, in cinema, ever. But it was also kind of entertaining, so that's why it's not number one. Number four, Life of the Party, Melissa McCarthy, I am just done. I, I know she put out a more serious movie later on in the year that people are saying was good. I don't care. <laughs> I've given you and your movies enough of a chance to do something different, to win me over, to actually make me laugh, and you failed in every sense of the word. You're, this is directed by your husband, Ben Falcone, which haven't we learned by now? Three strikes and you're out. These, this, this couple has worked together so many times, and every time these movies suck and they fail, I'm sick of it. I don't want to watch Melissa McCarthy ad lib and and pretend and joke around and and try fall over do all of these lazy jokes that that are supposed to make me laugh but they don't. I'm done. Number three, Fifty Shades Freed. I know I can't believe I stayed with this franchise. In fact, I was done after the second movie. I walked out of the second movie. I only saw this third one because my girlfriend, <laughs> I guess she got into it and wanted to watch it and wanted to watch the third one. So I was nice. I watched it with her. Man, what a waste of time. This was something that as bad as the first two movies were, they could have went even goofier. They could have went all out. You have Anastasia, Dakota Johnson and Christian Grey, this couple who have no chemistry and they have the least interesting relationship ever. These sex scenes are so dull and boring. But we had this villain, Jack, who used to be her boss and is obsessed with her for whatever reason. Man, if you couldn't tell that these movies were based off of Twilight fan fiction, it's the fact that you have this girl who the world revolves around her, between her boyfriend and his family, and then these villains who are obsessed with her. Like, she's the most sought-after girl, just like Bella. And, and it's laughable how much it's like Twilight. But 
you have this Jack character that's so much of a of a superhero villain character, and you think that maybe he'll team up with other villains like Kim Basinger and whatnot. But no, Kim Basinger didn't even come back for this third movie. She had enough sense to say, F it, I'm not coming back. And that's what made this movie feel tedious, feel long and drawn out with no real threat, no real interesting at all they could have went full over the top and they didn't even bother to do that waste of time number two gaudy this is horrible i couldn't believe how horribly made horribly directed horribly edited horribly laid out the story of john gaudy was played by john travolta who i'm sure thought that this was going to be an oscar situation for him (laughs) no no just no the wigs and the makeup look absolutely terrible the movie is showing all these different points in his life when he's younger and when he's older and then they're even showing moments of him in present day which is ridiculous because he's dead but in present day he's talking about himself in the past tense narrating to us in front of the Brooklyn Bridge. I'm like, what is this? This is directed by E from Entourage. Who thought he was a good choice for a director? Well, hopefully this is his last. But for my number one worst movie of 2018, this just pissed me off more than any other film. I'm talking about A Wrinkle in Time. I know this is based on a book, based on a popular book, source material, but I was more upset that this was a big budgeted Disney movie. We all know how much money Disney's willing to throw at movies. I was more upset that this film had a cast of Chris Pine, Reese Witherspoon, uh, Oprah Winfrey, who doesn't act in just anything, these are actors that Chris Pine actually gave a decent performance. Reese Witherspoon was just weird as fuck. Michael Pena had one of the most awkward cameos with his red eyes and his awkward stuff there. But Oprah being this this 20-foot giant, I don't understand what her character was doing, what she was supposed to represent, if she was supposed to be God or whatnot. I wouldn't be surprised. But I remember... Our main character, the little girl who was looking for her father, I remember her little brother, Charles Wallace Murray. This kid was so effing annoying, and I don't want to be too hard on him because he's only 10 years old, so I'm sure he'll grow up and rewatch this movie and say, holy crap, I'm annoying as hell. But they wrote him to have all of these jokes And all of these clever, witty dialogue that no kid would ever say. And it was just annoying. And then they turn him into a villain at the end and play him up to be a serious evil threat. And I'm like, what the fuck? What is this? This movie was uh, a chore, such a chore to sit in the theater for. And don't say that I didn't give it a chance. Don't say that I wasn't willing to go along with it because... This is why, almost why I hate the movie as much as I do. The movie itself, I I do think is terrible. But when Avery DuVernay, the director, comes out and says that we're sexist towards this movie because she's a woman, or that we're racist because this is a predominantly black cast, I'm black, Avery DuVernay, and I thought your movie sucked. So what do you have to say now? You're just going to go along with the sexist comment? Because I have like plenty of movies that have women as the main characters. I hate when people use that 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 excuse, use that reason for why their movie sucks and why people dislike their movies. I'm not saying that there's not anybody that might dislike the movie for those reasons. But to say the majority, to say that we all think that is irresponsible for a filmmaker to say, for a writer to say... And it, it's, it's a huge mark against her when it comes to anything else that she'll ever do and how I'll view her now as a storyteller. It's annoying. Fess up and say that your movie sucks. Anyways, guys, I had 
some bad movies to watch this past year. We had some good ones, yes, but I had to sit through some bad. Let me know in the comments below if you've seen any of these movies. What do you think of my list? Do you agree that they all sucked? Or do you think I'm being too hard on any one of them? Is there a bad movie that you think I left off? In fact, if you're wondering why I don't have any horror movies on my list, it's because I already did a horror a worst of list separately. So I'm not doing that also here. I wanted to put different movies in. Like, comment, subscribe. Later. Later.